Democrat, Republican. Know the difference between the two? Not a damn thing. Wall Street from them both fool. We live in dark times. So what you recommend? That we turn in all our guns and we have no self defense. Homeland Security brought 450 billion rounds of ammo in the hands behind the trigger. U.S. soldiers wearing the date is Friday, June 8th, 2018, and this is your host, Alex Humva, for the second episode of the Socialist Rifle Association podcast. Kicking things right off, a update on the organization and what's been happening these last two weeks. There was a conference call with several members involved with the national organization. The conference call helped set the stage for what we're planning to do, what things are coming up in the future. So mostly just getting birds in order, such as making sure all the legal requirements are being met for disclosure and such. Working on our disclosures to the membership, so financial disclosures, uh, operation disclosures, so that the members know what we're up to, what money is being spent where such and such as it stands the loc is has only a couple official members for legal purposes so we're working on a way to be able to distribute power more equitably i know we've got bylaws in the process of being made to help formalize the structure of power right now to make sure that people understand what decisions are being made why these decisions are being made, what authority these decisions are coming from. There are some discussions about operational security, making sure we stay safe in this political environment, making sure things aren't going to have any negative effects on people's OPSEC. Other than that, just the more trying to get chapters organized. Uh, right now, that's our big push, is we need, we need chapters and locals on the ground, getting organized, people getting together, having fun at the range, being comrades in solidarity with each other, that this, this can't happen unless people on the ground get together. And even if you don't want to be necessarily part of the greater organization, I'm sure we'll be able to have an affiliation process where you don't have to worry about national organization intrigue politics or whatever if that's something that's concerned if if you and your comrades just want to go out and have some fun and be a cool leftist organization but affiliate with the national sra i'm sure we'll have a process in the works to get that done as well the other big news is that the patches have officially been released we received a shipment of them. One of our members handling the distribution of those received that shipment from the fundraiser. If you participated in that fundraiser, expect some communication coming out, I believe, by email that will be asking for a mailing address to receive those patches at. That should be coming out here in a pretty soon. My understanding is that uh, they've been received and the logistics of it are just being set up right now and they'll be shipped out as soon as possible. Lastly, there was a very successful range day in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Our active chapter down there went to the range with a few newcomers. Very successful day. Everyone stayed safe. It was a good time. Moving right along to a quick subreddit update. We've had a few big stories in the subreddit these past two weeks. First up, we have a story about a black activist who was stabbed at a neo-Nazi rally. Unfortunately, he was targeted then after by the police with charges rather than those who were stabbing him. So we can all speculate on what's up with that. There was a thread that popped up about operational security. Remember, keep yourself safe. Don't reveal any more information than you feel comfortable with. I'm of the opinion that we do need to be a bit more open about ourselves to gain some legitimacy as a organization and as leftists. I don't think hiding in the shadows and being secretive is really beneficial to us but i completely understand that some people do not feel comfortable revealing that their political affiliations and i understand the history behind it and i i do not hold it against anyone who wants to keep themselves safe and doesn't want to reveal too much information about themselves so definitely check that thread out if you're looking for suggestions and tips about how to practice better opsec Another thread that propped up was the U.S. military's war college uh, war games simulating a loose revolutionary coalition in the early 2020s. Uh, they've got all sorts of people, leftists, eco-terrorists, Al-Qaeda, Anonymous, FARC, MS-13, in-law. It's, it's, it's a little silly if you ask me, but they can, they can practice whatever they want and see how that works for them. 
Another thread is about the Homeland Security race paper. It has come to light that Homeland Security is probably engaging in COINTEL era operations that they are working to suppress black political speech that some might draw parallels to, say, the Black Panther Party of the olden days. Of course, the Supreme Court has ruled on this issue many times, and there is a very high ceiling on what is acceptable constitutional speech and it very much seems to be that Homeland Security is unlawfully acting against constitutionally protected speech. Uh, there is a thread about anarchism and insurrectionary councilism. Uh, interesting read if you are into that sort of thing, it's, or even if you're not, always good to read things that you might not necessarily agree with, but it's good to keep an open mind and keep the conversation going on that. Finally, we've got a leftist debunks John Oliver's Venezuela episode thread uh, that's talking about John Oliver's recent episode on Venezuela right before the Venezuelan elections. Uh, again, uh, it's, if you agree with it, if you don't agree with it, I definitely recommend watching it. It's good to see these opposing opinions. John Oliver, not everyone's speed. I think he's funny from time to time, but it's good to make sure that since he is part of the bigger media conglomerate out there, it's good to have somebody trying to fact check him and trying to make sure that both sides of the argument are being represented there, especially when mainstream media companies can be a little, a little deceptive in their practices, we'll say. In news not found on the subreddit, we have some stories about socialism in the United States. The Democratic Socialists of America have had some electoral success in Pennsylvania. Four candidates have advanced through the primaries to the general election that were sponsored or part of the Democratic Socialists of America. Now, I know that not everyone agrees with the DSA. I have my own opinions about them, but I, I do like seeing leftists get into electoral politics. I like seeing some leftist representation up in the government, and I think it's a, it's a good time when these guys can win. Even if they don't completely agree with me, I believe in solidarity with all of our leftist brothers and sisters, and I think it's, it's a good thing that they're there. I haven't done extensive research on the candidates that have advanced, but I haven't seen anything yet that screams corporate shill or such to me. I do hope that with the success of the DSA that maybe other socialist groups, such as the Socialist Alternative, can see more success than just the city council seat in Seattle. I'd like to definitely see the Socialist Alternative be able to make some gains. Probably not the Communist Party of America. That's, they've definitely gone to the wayside in recent years. Now, an article I'd like to just discuss briefly that I feel is a good macrocosm of the broader issue with discussing socialism with, uh, we'll say, centrist and right-leaning individuals is this article from the Northwest Herald entitled Letter, Liberalism is Socialism. It was published May 28th. So in this letter, the individual writing to the editor starts with these words. Here is why Americans should turn away with the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party has allowed leftist liberal socialism to infiltrate and seize the party. Democrats eradicated God from their platform in 2012. Socialists and communists don't believe in God. The Democratic Party has betrayed the U.S. Constitution and the American people. Democrats have contempt for border security while supporting globalization and open borders. Democrats have contempt for our immigration laws. Democrats have contempt for legal citizenship while issuing driver's licenses to illegal immigrants. Democrats believe in sanctuary cities and states. End quote. So, just starting off with this, the reason I felt this was something that I should talk about is it it's really serves as a great blown up picture of misunderstandings about socialism and it's exactly in the title liberalism is socialism this could not be further from the truth of course and just visiting the subreddit will show that we don't have very much like for liberals and liberalism because liberalism ties into a political thought that is not antithetical to leftism but is nonetheless not very compatible with socialism, we'll say. It just starts with simple misunderstandings like this, that it's his words, leftist liberal socialism. Okay, first of all, I understand that why you might say leftist socialism, it's kind of redundant. It's like saying a rectangular square, that socialism falls under leftism. So by saying leftist socialism, it's, yes, it's technically correct, but it's not there. But this thing, liberal socialism, 
let's let's take a look and think what does liberal mean well of course in the american sense this is difficult because we have a difficult different political structure than what is seen in europe for instance that liberals in europe are completely different from what we would think of as liberals in america so let's just take liberal to mean the democratic party what does the democratic party stand for well the democratic party does not oppose the capitalist system the democratic party does not oppose the free market they do in their goals and beliefs state that they wish for a greater welfare state that there is a need for more welfare, more state-sponsored welfare, that the government should have a greater role in people's lives. That is definitely something the Democratic Party holds in their beliefs and values. But big government does not equal socialism. And I think this comes back to the core basis that no matter what kind of socialist you are, we can all agree, and even no matter what kind of leftist you are, we can all agree it comes back to the workers and who owns the means of production the democratic party yes they have lip service to unions but they have not been very strong allies in that sense democrats treat unions more as fundraising vehicles and as basins of voters rather than people who should be able to possess the means of production and that's that's just core to socialism is do the workers possess the means of production and even to an extent other forms of leftist thought like anarchism anarchism still has it in there that the people should possess the means of production and then the second part of this uh socialists and communists don't believe in god clearly never met a christian socialist i'll put it out there on the record i consider myself that does it mean that i'm running around conducting the fifth crusade no, not really. But it does exist. It's a real political ideology. It's a real political thought. There's a lot of people who have written great essays, books, and articles about how Christianity and other religions of all kinds, Islam, Judaism, Shinto, I'm sure, the all kinds of religions that are compatible with socialism. It's not, not something that, yes, many of the self-proclaimed socialist states had atheism built into their governments and do i necessarily agree with how that was implemented no no i don't i don't agree with a lot of things and how they were implemented in the world but that doesn't mean just because there's a country that did it that one way doesn't mean that's how the whole philosophy is many countries in europe still have state sanctioned churches the church of england is still run by the monarch and the monarch is still head of state for the united kingdom does this mean that all capitalism all parliamentary democracies are destined to have a state religion no that's not it border security is a whole big issue that i won't get into right now that that'll have to be for a future episode when i can dissect through this even further and i'm sure there'll be plenty more stories to come through same with driver's licenses that's a whole topic that immigration in general that's that's a good thing for a future podcast but i don't want to get too bogged down because this next part is more relevant to the sra and this podcast beginning quote from the article democrats believe in gun confiscation along with rescinding the second amendment and with restrictions on speech and religion De democrats believe in abortion and forcing taxpayer funding for planned parenthood democrats believe in rescinding the 2018 tax reform bill returning higher taxes and taking away taxpayers money democrats have embraced the evil of socialism in the 2016 election so talking about that, it is true that many Democrats support further gun laws. And we've had even former Supreme Court justices talk about rescinding the Second Amendment. And so where does that stand? Well, socialism means something like the Second Amendment. Not everyone agrees with the Second Amendment because it was written by people in a foregone era that did not have very nice political views. And I get that. I understand that. I can understand that you don't want to be tied to a constitution because a constitution can change constitutions come and go even though they are supposed to be permanent documents all nations rise and fall this is just part of how human society works and i can i can sympathize with the idea 
that this is a fundamental human right. And I do believe that there is a fundamental human right to self-defense. I believe that if you need to protect yourself, if you need to protect your community, that is something you have the right to. And there is no force on earth that can remove that right from you because by, by right of existence, you have that right to protect yourself and your community. But this is part of socialism that as socialism states the workers need to possess the means of production and so by necessity the workers must be able to defend themselves and their communities it comes back to Karl Marx and Frederick Engels who wrote that under no pretext do we surrender arms so I could keep on going on about this letter but I'll I'll leave it for you guys to read into some more and see what you think of it and what rebuttals you can think. Again, it's from the Northwest Herald. It's a letter to the editor, Liberalism is Socialism. I just thought I'd talk about that for a second. It really gets under my call when people wrongly associate these two political thoughts together. And clearly it is not. Any sort of research will show that liberalism and socialism are two very distinct things. But this is a common thread in American politics and it makes it really hard to talk about socialism without these knee-jerk reactions to a completely different ideology. Well, that's about the end of this episode of the podcast. Again, still working on this, still trying to make this as good as it can be. Uh, looking at new segments to bring on, looking at new guests to bring on. If anyone wants to be a guest on here, feels comfortable pulling up the mic and speaking their thoughts out. I'm always happy to have a discussion, and I'm sure people will be happy to hear it. The last episode went over pretty well. Didn't have too many complaints I saw last time. If anyone has any feedback, always welcome to give it in the subreddit or anywhere else this episode will be posted. Hope to be back in two weeks with another update on anything the organization is doing. Hopefully premiere some new segments. I've been thinking about a history of socialism segment. If anyone's got suggestions for people they'd like to hear a brief mention about, a brief history of individuals from the leftist struggle, definitely would be interested in hearing them. Definitely be interested in talking about them for a bit and helping spread knowledge about the many, many individuals that have come through the years to help the cause. And that's all I got today, so have a good rest of your days and seize the means of production. Seize the means of production. Seize the means of production.